This is a curb log, and it's on Devil Man Cry Baby, and it's really sad, and it fucked me right up. And that's really it. Thanks for joining, everybody. Really appreciate you tuning in for this one. Uh, what, what else? What else is there for me to say? I did it. I did it. I watched it. I, 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 I missed it when it was th- th- this when the show was being talked about by absolutely everybody, and everyone was already emotionally fucked up like months ago, however long it was. Jesus H. Christ. Wow. <laughs> like, oof. Um, oh, January. Okay, whatever. Sorry, I had to look at the date again. Yeah, um, wow, I just got through watching this. It's, it's still uh, early on in April. This is probably coming out like a few weeks from now. Wow, uh, just good fucking God almighty. Uh, you see, it's funny. I, I literally just opened up with two cursings of, of Lord's names in vain, which I apologize to any and all religious listeners for the, the blasphemy of that. But And yet it's fitting considering the content of this show. Okay, so I guess to start off with, um, I have known next to absolutely nothing about this franchise. Uh, I know that it was, of course, an old school, uh, you know, 70s manga series from way back. I had seen pictures of Devil Man, uh, probably seen lots of merchandise of him from other stuff in the past. Uh, I think I had some friends from, like, back in the day that were fans of, like, one of the original, uh, you know, OVAs or movies or whatever it was that, uh, that had come out. But uh, so yeah, this uh, this this web series just kind of came out unexpectedly. I, I uh, you know it just kind of hit me by surprise uh, a few months ago when it just kind of made the scene on Netflix and everybody was like, oh, what's this Devil Man thing? And you know, d- literally my every orifice of my social media was just littered with people being like, oh, Devil Man fucked me up and fucked me up. And um, I, I was uh, I was immediately attracted to this show uh, based well I did two things uh, for one thing I actually just went back and I watched the um, uh, the rest of because I never finished it the Cyborg Zero Zero Nine versus Devil Man uh, uh, like three episode OVA thing that went on Netflix uh, sometime I think last year maybe earlier than that uh, might have been a while ago by now but uh, that was kind of my first taste of it um, those of you who haven't seen that. Uh, and first of all, I'm going to be spoiling Devil Man Cry Baby, so if you haven't seen the show, what the fuck are you doing listening to this? Nonetheless, uh, I, I watched that, and of course it opens up with, uh, I guess, the what is a classic scene from the manga with um, Gene Men, the turtle demon thing, with the human heads all encased inside him and everything, and Akira having to, you know, kill them in order to end all their lives and everything. And I was like, oh, oh, this shit's fucked up. Uh, I've talked before, probably uh, several anime April's ago, uh, about one of my favorite shows of all time, which is Speed Grapher, uh, a, a similarly tremendously fucked up uh, kind of show. But my God, this this series takes the cake on a level beyond anything I have ever imagined. This is this is flat out probably one of the darkest things I have ever taken a look at uh, in terms of its subject matter, its shock value, its themes, like just. Wow. Uh, I guess also, to be fair, I heard bits about it because uh, a few friends of mine are in the uh, English dub cast. Uh, although, funnily enough, I've, I've yet to talk uh, about the show with any of them as of this recording. Uh, this is weeks later. Maybe I have by now. Nonetheless, uh, I was also very attracted to it knowing it was, uh, it was only 10 episodes. It wasn't even like a full uh, season of a, of a standard show with 13 or whatever. Um, so getting through it was a kind of a quick burst and everything. I, I finished through all the episodes and basically a, a little over a weekend and some change, I guess. But yeah, uh, I, I'm emotionally affected while doing this because I literally just got through watching the last couple episodes where some of the most heart wrenching, gut wrenching mind, soul, body, every fiber of my being is wrenched <laughs> by by the, the shit that happened in this. Um, I guess it had been uh, brought to my attention uh, by a few people on, on Twitter uh, that I guess this is basically, a, a, and also from my own research on just like some wiki searches and things, that this is more or less just a uh, a very quick uh, adaptation, sort of a, a re-adaptation of the, the, like the original manga story, which I don't know how long it ran for or etc. I mean, I saw that the original anime series went for like far more episodes than this, so I imagine, uh, you know, this was probably a lot longer in terms of its uh, source material, but yeah, this was, uh, th- th- this interpretation for whatever liberties they took, I, it was absolutely masterfully done in every way. The, the, the animation was stunning. 
The music is incredible. I literally even just doing that little intro bit earlier was affecting me again because it was making me think of horrible things happening the last couple episodes that I'm sure you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, and, uh, and actually, shout outs to the, uh, the very well done and, and entertaining little uh, rap segments throughout a bunch of the episodes. Uh, I feel bad that the English dub, I'm sure, probably didn't have time to uh, adapt all of them, except for the one uh, made by uh, Mayuda, uh, performed masterfully, of course, by Keith Silverstein. So shout out to him. Uh, shout out to the whole cast, Kyle McCarley, Griffin Burns, uh, Christina V., uh, Jeremy Lee, everybody, they're all, they're all awesome. Um, and, uh, and if I, if I know what it's like to work on Netflix dubs, I'm sure they probably didn't have much time to do it. So yeah, it's that, that shit's tough. Anyway. Uh, yeah, the music is great. Uh, and I mean, I, I guess from reading some of the slight differences in terms of the, uh, actual story contents, uh, lifted from the manga, um, I can tell that, yeah, they, they, they tried to, uh, execute it in some different ways, uh, kind of placing different characters in different locations. I know that, uh, the character of Miko, uh, from what I understand is in- incredibly different, uh, from, you know, whatever equivalent that she kind of had in the original material or, or past incarnations. I know there's been a lot of different other, like, spinoffs and different versions of this or whatever. Uh, Miko, of course, was, you know, I, I can tell from the, the Kopi cements of fan art that she's a big favorite by people. Um, Miki was actually uh, more interesting than I expected too. I mean, I, I don't, from my little brief glimpses of the uh, the the, I, I assume maybe more manga esque versions of the characters that were seen in the uh, Devil Man series. I wasn't quite sure what to think of all of them just yet because it wasn't enough of a taste. Uh, obviously, I knew what the Cyborg Zero Zero Nine characters were like because, of course, I grew up with that series on uh, Cartoon Network. Uh, the 2001 version, but uh, yeah, even Mickey, who I was uh, worried was just going to be kind of like, I'm the girl or whatever, like, she actually had a really intriguing story, and like, I was rooting for her a lot, you know, throughout the whole story, and of course, you can't root for really much of anybody other than basically Akira, because everybody either dies a horrible, gruesome, disgusting, murderous death, or you're a nut job, and you, you're on the side of Rio, I guess, but it's funny, I remember, uh, I think, Casey was joking about how, like, oh, Rio is best boy, having only seen, like, a couple of episodes, and I'm like, no, Casey, Rio is the absolute worst, like, he is the complete opposite of best boy, he is literally Satan, (laughs) like, and, uh, which was hilarious to me, almost, if, if, well, it would have been hilarious to me if I wasn't fucking just dying of sadness by that last episode for Christ's sake. But yeah, all the, uh, the central characters in particular, those, those main four of Akira, uh, Ryo, Miki and Miko, uh, were all really intriguing. Uh, ha- had a really nice sense of, uh, of balance, I think placed between all four of them, uh, spread throughout the whole show. Obviously Akira and Ryo are at the, the forefronts, you know, as per the usual, but, uh, I think they did, they did a really nice job of like making some intriguing stories with all of them and the side characters and everything. The creepy, uh, the 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 creepy photographer guy who got his just desserts. Um, I loved the rapper guys. Uh, I didn't like them right away. They were entertaining right away, but I didn't like them until a little later on when they kind of show their their more uh, you know protective side and you know grow on to be good guys and everything. Um, even the parents, like my God, uh, the the first like really, really disturbing moment to me. Now we're really going into ter- to spoiler territory here. So, well, last warning. Um, the first incredibly disturbing moment to me uh, out of everything that had happened so far. Uh, well, I guess, well, first of all, before I get to that, um, as, in terms of just being disturbing, uh, you know, I, I have a certain level of being able to deal with gore, particularly when it's animated. It's, uh, you know, live action stuff, which is why I can't deal with most horror movies, at least a lot of the modern ones and that kind of shit, because uh, it just, it, it, it hurts too much. Uh, but it's, uh, w- with animated stuff, I have a certain threshold, I guess, comparatively. Uh, the, the opening episode, I think, definitely, like, sets the tone in terms of, like, all right, a lot of shock value and, uh, you know, some weird fetishy shit that I don't quite, I'm just over here being like, eh, that's a little gross, whatever, I'm not into this. But, you know, I stuck with it because I'm like, I know that the show gets really good and everybody's, like, really, really having a big jizz sleep over it, which, speaking of gross fetishy shit, I will say that <laughs> fucking Akira's uh, jizz sleep was probably the funniest moment to me. I was, I think I was laughing in the middle of saying this show is so fucked, something to that effect. Uh, Amy can probably uh, testify to that. Uh, <laughs> nonetheless, um, yeah, the, uh, the, the first truly disturbing moment to me in the whole thing was uh, the stuff with uh, uh, Miki's family. Um, the, the, 
the dad having this just absolute conflict for going back and forth for like a full minute as he watches the the demon version of his son like eating the husk of, of the mom and he's crying and I'm like Jesus fucking Christ this is insane and then of course the uh the scene at the end of episode 9 with Akira not getting back in time to save literally anybody he ever cares about in his life uh just it fucked me up. It made me sick. It made me sad, etc. And like I, even the 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 I, I, and even after that, like in the last episode, I had some some false minor sense of hope, thinking like, oh, but they'll get revenge and everything will be fine. And oh no, this ending is really, really grim and sad. And and wow, just fuck me running, <laughs> like uh, appropriately uh, for, for the content of this show. Uh, fuck me running, Devil, Devil Man Cry Baby. Fuck me running. That's the that's, I I'm, I've, I've decided. That's that's the that's the name of this cur blog. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So I um, as far as what I actually took away from it, though, uh, this is exactly uh, in, in terms of I guess. Uh, themes specifically this is uh, this is very much maybe not exactly i should rephrase that it, it's very much along the lines of the type of stuff that i really uh, not only am into as a as a like a, a viewer i guess you could say but uh i in terms of the stuff that i want to tackle thematically for my own stuff uh certainly not to the same level of of just you know super ultra 70s grim dark as uh this which this series captures incredibly well and and executed phenomenally uh but you know in terms of the specifics as far as like uh you know good versus evil and and you know the the reality of humankind etc i mean you know exposing you know people for what they really are and you know what is what is really considered like a human or a demon with quotation marks those kind of things uh you know that that moment i was mentioning earlier with um the heads on pikes uh <sighs> i can't it's it's killing me even literally just thinking about it right now uh with akira just like freaking out and burning all the these these nut jobs uh like murderous psychopath humans to the ground of like you're like you're the one who are all demons like that kind of shit even though like it made me sick it was also so incredibly emotionally impactful for what it does uh you know and all that and um yeah so and and even uh, uh rio slash uh say li literal satan's uh, final speech to him at the end uh and then this that 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 last fucked up little segment uh you know even even that was just like it, it said a whole lot about kind of the the general thematics of this and everything and it made me think like even actually on on uh the, the less deeper side even just like the the lore kind of stuff and uh, the utilization of like demons in the scope of the human world and like the uses of these god characters and everything like it's it's a uh, very akin to the type of stuff that i was thinking about whenever i had like any kind of sense of like demons and gods and any kind of like alienotic otherworldly creatures of any kind in uh, my own stuff you know I, i've been I, as i often say balancing act is the uh the old flame that I cheat on tome with sometimes when I, I'm like, oh, I feel like writing some, some material for balancing out. I feel like developing this a little bit. And like Devilman is actually like the, the, the lore side of it. And even some of the, the themes to it as well. Um, not to the same extreme, certainly, but uh, proved to be pretty inspiring in terms of the type of stuff that I want to do in the future with, with that uh, particular IP. And, uh, you know, I mean, the, the people who know my tastes and a lot of the stuff that I grew up with and still have a soft spot for, I mean, even thinking about like Inuyasha, which is a completely different kind of show anyway, but although it had some grim dark stuff, you know, kind of mixed in there once in a while too, and played with a lot of the, the, the demon side of those things in the case of yokai, I guess you could say specifically, um, you know, this, this, type, this type of stuff really resonates with me. I think, and I think particularly because it gets to like the core of like, Again, the concepts of good and evil, which are kind of the the, the biggest sort of, of of all the different themes that I play with and, and and things that I try to chase with my own stories. Those are like you know that, that that's like the biggest thing above all else that I always uh, you know, which I think is also why I'm so attracted to uh, just to superhero stories in general. And Devil Man, I, I would I would consider Devil Man a superhero story. You know, I I've grown very much to like uh, Akira Fudo. I I, I love what he represents uh you know in, in the you know trying to resist a self-fulfilling prophecy of being possessed by this you know amon demon character uh who we don't really get to know much about him separately i don't know if he kind of has his own 
separate personality that we learn more about from the manga compared to other stuff. I know that in the cyborg thing, uh, he kind of uh, gets a little bit of screen time here and there, like separated from Akira himself. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, like the, the themes that, that encompass everything about Akira's character were extremely appealing to me, and, and it made me like him a lot. As a, he's 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 definitely like gone down as an as a new uh, a new lo- lo- lovable protagonist in my eyes in terms of anime. But yeah, and otherwise, this has definitely made me curious about uh, Go Nagai's other work. I've, I've never I've always known about uh, Cutie Honey and Mazinger. Uh, Mazinger for weird purposes back in high school. There's a story for that someday. Uh, and Cutie Honey, of course, I'm, I've, I've seen the beautiful opening animations and all that. Um, you know, I, I think there's some new Cutie Honey show coming out or something uh, relatively soon. And uh, I, I might even, maybe for shits, I might go check out uh, one of the Devil Man like OVAs or something. In fact, actually, if anybody listening to this happens to be a, uh, I guess, more hardcore Devil Man fan, you know, in general. Uh, and has any recommendations for specific things within the Devil Man legacy to check out? Uh, particularly, uh, let me know in the comments. I would uh, I would be curious. Uh, particularly if it's derived from this same material. Uh, you know, I, I know there's there's like a couple different like other movie versions or something, and then there's like the old uh, animated series from way back uh, that was like thirty something episodes or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see like maybe some more to this. Uh, it, you know, I, I, I'm very much intrigued uh, by. You know what came before this version, certainly. Uh, although you know this this one was a, a big inspiration, I would say. Um, but yeah, so those are those are all my thoughts. Uh, you know, I wanted to do a, just a little quick one about this. I didn't have anybody in mind for uh, as a guest on this one, but uh, yeah, it was uh, this was a great show. Uh, fucked me up super hard in that speed graffer kind of way. Um, didn't didn't inspire as much uh, hopefulness or any kind of I guess positivity in that light by the end of it but uh it was it was certainly very emotionally impactful it was very entertaining uh and and still pretty inspiring just in terms of like thinking about my own stories and what i want to do with uh my uh darker and deeper themes as well i you know and 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 truthfully too like in, in looking at the whole of it there were there were certainly some things about it that were a little bit all over the place maybe that might have even been uh as a result of the abridgment of this uh, but overall, like, I really give it a lot of credit for, like, trying to say something, you know, very meaningful about these these themes of good and evil and, you know, playing with the, you know, the whole sort of, um, you know, perceptions of what an angel and a devil and a human and a demon is and all that crap. And, uh, you know, I, that, that, really, that, that, that really strikes me as, as something cool. And, you know, so I, I give a ton of props to the, uh, the animation studio and the directors and everybody who worked on this series in Japan. And uh, I'm curious to see also, even, you know, Devil Man aside, I'm curious to see what this team creates next, uh, you know, whether it's their own thing or another adaptation of a previous uh, existing thing or otherwise. But, uh, yeah, this was super cool. So that'll do it. Um, I've got one more idea for another uh, Anime April Curblad that I want to do this month. Uh, I, I, at the moment, I'm mostly spreading these out over Saturdays and trying to do work over the courses of these weekdays. Uh, but yeah, let me know uh, if you have any other last uh, suggestions for anime series to cover that I haven't already. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Mayhaps I will, be, I will have the chance to do one. Uh, obviously, again, still very busy with a lot of things to do. But uh, yeah, so thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for crying. <sighs>